In this Blackthorn Pro tutorial, we will show you how to set up the basics of a city builder game using Unity and C Sharp. You will learn how to place buildings on a grid like map and have those buildings generate any resource you want. So we have this very simple scene set up. Basically, there's an empty game object called Grid that holds a bunch of tiles. These are simply sprite renderers for now, but we'll use these to indicate to the player where he can place his buildings. All right, so I'm going to start by creating a new empty game object called Game Manager. I will now add to it a C Sharp script, also called Game Manager. Inside of the script, we will keep track of our gold resource by creating a public int variable called gold. Let's also import the unity.ui namespace. Like that, we can now create a public text variable called gold text. Now, inside of the update function, we will set our gold text.text to be equal to our gold variable. Don't forget to add dot to string to convert the integer into a string. Now back inside of Unity, I will set my gold variable to be equal to 50 and drag and drop my gold text into this slot. And if we hit play, you will see that our gold UI gets updated. Now I'm going to make a new C Sharp script called building and I'll add it to all my building prefabs. Inside of this script, we will just create a public int variable called cost. Like that, we can come and choose a cost for each building inside of the inspector. Back to our game manager script, I will create a public void function called by build. Building. This function will take in as a parameter a building called building. Notes that we are making this function public since we will be calling this function from our button on click events. Now first of all, when we click on a building to buy, we need to check if we have enough gold to buy it. So if gold is greater or equal to building.cost. If that's the case, then we want to decrease our gold variable by our building cost. Now let's go back up to the top of my script and create a building variable called building to place. Then back to our function, we will set our building to place to be equal to building. So we're basically storing in a variable the building that we now want to place. We also want to activate the grid so that we can see where we can place our building. So I will create a public game object variable called grid and then in my function, I will set grid.setActive true. All right, so once we click on an item, we also want our cursor to become the item. So back in Unity, I will drag and drop one of my buildings in the scene and deactivate it for a moment. I will also rename it to custom cursor. Now let's create and add to this new object a C Sharp script called custom cursor. This script will be in charge of making the custom cursor follow our mouse position. So in the update function, I will create a vector2 variable called mouse position that will set equal to camera.main dot screen to world point input dot mouse position so input dot mouse position basically retrieves the mouse position in screen space so basically in pixel coordinates but we need it in world space so in unity unit sizes that's why we are wrapping it inside of this camera dot main dot screen to world point function Okay, now let's save the script and head over back to our game manager script. I create a public custom cursor variable called custom cursor. And then inside of my function, I will activate the custom cursor by saying custom cursor dot game object dot set active true. Then we will say custom cursor dot get component sprite render dot sprite. And we will set it equal to building dot get component sprite render dot sprite. Like that, our custom cursor will have that sprite or whatever building we just bought. And we will also deactivate the default cursor by saying cursor.visible equals false. Okay, so let's save the script and head over back to Unity. Let's drag and drop our variables, so I need to drag and drop my grid inside of this grid slot, as well as the custom cursor inside of this respective slot. We also need to add our on-click event to our buttons. So for example, I can click on my first button, come down to the on-click event, I will now press on this little plus sign, then drag and drop my game manager script find the buy building function, and finally drag and drop the correct building that you want to buy into this slot. Then you can repeat this process for each building that you might have in your game. Now if I press play, you will see that if I click on this building, our gold goes down, our cursor turns into the building we just bought, and our grid gets activated. We are now ready to start placing our buildings on our grid. All right, so inside of the grid game object, there are all the tiles that we can spawn our buildings on. Let's add to them a C Sharp script called tile. Now open up. Inside of this script, we will create a public bool variable called isOccupied. This variable will keep track if a building has already been placed on the tile or not. Then we also want to make the tile green if it isn't occupied and red if it is. So I will make two public color variables, one called green color and the other called red color. Finally, we will make a sprite render variable called rend. Then inside of the start function, we will set rends to be equal to the sprite renderer components that is attached to this object. In the update function, we will check if is occupied is equal to true. If it is, then we will set the rends.color to be equal to red color. 
else. So if the tile isn't occupied, then we'll set rend.color to green color. All right, now that we took care of that, let's jump back to our game manager script to actually place our buildings. Inside of the update function, I will check if input.get mouse button down zero. So we're checking if we hit the left mouse button. If so, then we also want to check if building to place is not equal to null. Now we need to find what's the nearest tile to the place that we just clicked on. So let's come up to the top of our script and create a public tile array called tiles. So back inside of our update function, I'll create a tile variable called nearest tile that will set equal to null, as well as a float variable called nearest tile that will be equal to float.max value. Then let's loop through all of our files with a for each loop. And in here I will calculate the distance between this tile and our click. So let's create a float variable called distance and it will be equal to vector2.distance between our tiles.transform.position and our camera.main.screen2world point input mouse position. Now let's check if this distance is smaller than our nearest distance variable. And if so, then our nearest distance will now be equal to our distance variable and our nearest tile will be equal to the current tile we are looping through. So tile. Okay, so that's how we quickly fetch the closest tile from our click. Now that we have found it, let's check if it is occupied by saying if nearest tile dot is occupied equals false. If so, then we will instantiate our building to place at our nearest tile dot position and with no rotation. Once we have built our new building, we will set building to place back equal to null. Of course, we need to now set nearest tile dot is occupied to true since this tile is now occupied. We will also deactivate our grid and our custom cursor by saying dot set active false. Let's finally activate our default cursor by typing cursor dot visible equals true. And there we go, we are all done. So let's save the script and head over back to Unity. We can select our game manager object, lock the inspector by clicking on this icon up here, and then select all of our tiles and drag and drop them inside of our tiles array. Now let's unlock the inspector and select all of our tiles. Then just go ahead and choose a green and red color. Remember to bump up the alpha channel, otherwise your colors will be completely transparent by default. Okay, so if we now press play and test it out, you will see that it's working great. Let's finally just make it so that our buildings yield gold over time. So I'll quickly jump inside of my building script. I'm going to create a public ins variable called gold increase as well as a public float variable called time between increases and a private float variable called next increase time. Then inside of the update function, I will check if our current time in the game, so time.time, .time, is greater than or equal to our next increase time variable. If so, then we will set our next increase time to be equal to time.time .time plus our time between increases variable. Okay, so that's our little timer made. Let's now create a game manager variable called GM. And then inside of the start function, I will set GM to be equal to find object of type game manager. Then inside of our timer, I will increment gm.gold by our gold increase variable. Okay, so we are all done. So let's save the script and go back into Unity. I will now select my building prefabs and choose how much gold they should make every so often. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. During 2022, we'll be uploading a game dev video every single Sunday. We'll be making tutorials, devlogs, game dev challenges, and just try and be a great part of this whole game creation conversation. If you have any tutorials you would really like us to create, drop a suggestion in the comments. We read every single one. Also subscribe so you get notified for next week's video and hit like if this video was useful. It's a really big help for us as well. All right, see you soon. Cheers.